The United Nations World Food Programme says 2.2 million people in Gaza need urgent food assistance. That's nearly all the people living in Gaza. Abir Atifa is Senior Spokesperson at World Food Programme. She joins us from Cairo. Thank you uh, once again for joining us on Al Jazeera. OK, first of all, can you just give us uh, the latest on what the situation is like for people going hungry in Gaza right now? The situation is catastrophic. Supplies of food and water are practically non-existent in Gaza, and uh, only a fraction of what is needed is arriving through the border crossing point from Rafah. And now that we have seen rain, uh, winter fast approaching, unsafe and very crowded shelters, the lack of clean water, civilians uh, are facing the, uh, in, you know, the immediate risk of falling into starvation. Now, um, the, uh, as you mentioned, hunger is spreading very fast. Uh, only 10% uh, of the supplies uh, of food that used to get in Gaza is getting in, even with the increased number of trucks crossing on daily uh, basis into these convoys. The local markets are uh, have completely shut down. Uh, farmers are no longer going to their farmland or the fishermen, they no longer go to the sea. And uh, people are, of course, uh, trying to survive and resorting to very negative coping mechanisms. But worse than that is that the, 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 the staple food for most Palestinians in Gaza, which is bread, is no longer uh, mm. in sight for anyone in Gaza. It's becoming a luxury because all the bakeries either have been, you know, damaged or the fuel has completely run out. Yeah, just huge, huge issues there. In the last few hours, we've heard talk of a potential truce deal uh, potentially coming as soon as the next 10 or 12 hours. From your point of view, what has to be included in any deal? I think it's really important to have an agreement on uh, safe access for humanitarian aid workers to all people who are in need and the ability to organize uh, safe food distributions, uh, the, also the ability so that we can get more staff in and rotate our teams uh, in and out of Gaza, uh, uh, more fuel. Uh, so that we are able to transport uh, transport food supplies from the uh, you know the the side the Palestinian side of the border with Egypt to inside Gaza, and then also extremely important that we have more than one access point uh, to Gaza, uh, not just through Rafah, but also from all from Karim Shalom, from Jordan, from the sea, from wherever we can get because it just it's really not enough. Even with the increased number of trucks, it is still a fraction of, of, of the needs, especially now. Mm. I know you, you touched on this uh, just before, but what happens when there is widespread food insecurity, when everyone, 2.2 mil million people, start to go hungry? I mean, does society as a whole just start to break down effectively? Of course, I think the social fabric of this society will be Im completely impacted by, uh, by hunger. So, uh, you know, the, the reality is that also people will be, the resilience is collapsing. I mean, people can, you can go hungry for a day or two days, for a week, you know, just having a, a meal and skipping another day. But the reality is that you're going to start to have, you know, people uh, a, a breakdown because of the, uh, you know, uh, bodies becoming less immune, uh, widespread of the uh, cold weather and people starting to get sick. And the reality is that in this context, you're not going to see people walking around skin and bones as some people have the image of, of, you know, hunger and starvation. The reality is that people, immunity systems will break down and we will have people dying because of diseases that could have been prevented if they had access to nutrition. Okay, thank you so much for that. Just goes to show just how uh, needed this truce uh, deal is that we've been talking about. Abir Atifa, a senior spokesperson for the World Food Programme. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.